I undid all the Torx 6 headed screws around the edge of the case and then with two more screws on the back it is possible to now remove the back of this unit. Now just this back metal piece is very heavy because like I said it has to support the weight of the unit when say wall mounted. I'm not going to remove it on camera but it is a very sturdy bit of metal. So this is the back unit you can see that it's shaped to have space to fit all of the equipment inside in it. And if we just go down a bit, we will to see sort of a, the thickness of the metal here. So it is quite thick metal and certainly it doesn't, it doesn't flex even with the actual sort of size of this metal object. We can just see a bit of the edges there. But nonetheless, this is a very rigid and strong bit of metal. So then we are greeted with the insides of this unit. Now, to note, I've taken the computer out of it, which would sit on that brown sort of surface in the case. Apart from that, I've undone a cable tie, I think, but the rest is pretty much the same. So you can see this is made up of a whole variety of different components all attached to this metal, to another sort of metal fixing piece. So if we first start at this corner, there is a fan, a spe the speakers, the furthest at the back. There's a fan and then that sort of ray section houses a power supply for the LCD display behind. And then in the front corner, front left corner of the image is another power supply, which then connects to the terminal block over there for then feeding most of the equipment on this board. Now if I just drop the camera down a bit, we can see there is another fan and the terminal block. Now just above the terminal block is a dual channel amplifier with the sound of audio jack input and then it outputs to the two speakers. The other speaker is on the other side there. So that's kind of how that works. Now the module at the front here is the LCD display module. It houses the sort of video input, so VGA there, DVI. It also has the standard composite input and this also has serial port control as well which is through that little cable over there which then connects to a serial port and then the serial cable. This is the display board in a little bit more detail. The main chip there is a Genesis Display Perfection GM1501-LF. Now I have seen that chip used in a number of LCD products. And in terms of the rest of the connectors on this, I believe these are the output to the actual display. That is like the actual serial as I said. And then we've got like uh, power and the various visual ones there. Now uh, over here is the touchscreen controller. The writing on it suggests that it is made by General Touch. And it has, and it's left black cable features power and then the USB connection to the computer. So that's really all there is pretty much to this. There are also sort of earthing bars earthing connectors on the sides. The mains voltage comes in through that IEC jack there, then comes along and connects to that terminal block there. And then the power from that goes to the power brick here that so powers the unit, the LCD power unit, and also over to the power supply for the computer in the unit. Now this sort of sheet with everything attached to it, has screw holes all around the side which had screws in them and I've removed the screws and this board, this metal board does actually lift out leaving just the sort of metal surround on this case however it is attached by some cables well not attached but sort of held in by some cables at the bottom there which go to the speakers so I'm not really going to lift it up especially since there's the sensitive touchscreen layer which could get damaged if I don't sort of lift it sufficiently well off it is very neatly put together if you ignore the mess there because obviously I've semi disassembled it. Um, but nonetheless, like everything is cable tied down. The wiring is all quite neat. 
and it is arranged in quite a sort of tidy fashion generally. However, it does sort of look a little bit, well, it's quite interesting just how they've just basically used a whole sort of series of effectively off the shelf parts and just sort of put it all together to make this sort of industrial device. But with these sort of low volumes that these devices, I guess, would be produced in, that is probably the most effective way of doing it. Just a final thing to note, uh, my Windows 10 64-bit laptop seems to happily install the driver for the touch controller automatically. And in terms of the display, it appears to be a native resolution of 1360 by 768. So this isn't the full HD version. The actual LCD panel itself is manufactured by Samsung, though I'm not able to read the model number of the display. So I think I might have to uh, open this up perhaps even further if I dare. And the computer is happily running Windows 8.1. So that's all very nice. Um, didn't in, get didn't have the graphics drivers immediately, but I let Windows Update run, and then it found them. So in the final part of this video series, I shall be opening up the little computer, which is manufactured by AOPEN.